Hello you guys, welcome back to another video. Thank you for clicking on this video. And today I have a new Notion video for you guys. I actually already made one for the start of 2024, but I had to scrap it because Notion calendar came out and I have to revamp my entire workspace, which makes sense because now you can actually view all of your pages in one place. So let's get into how I have my Notion workflow set up. As you can see here, I have this main page called the homepage. It's where all of my content or actionable stuff lives. I don't have all of my databases here, but I do have all of the things I might want to access throughout the day at arm's reach. So it's really easy for me to adjust stuff or check things off, etc. If I want to access other pages, I usually just use command P to find that page and go straight to that page. So I don't usually use the sidebar to dig into different pages. I don't really do that because it takes a lot of time. So first of all, I have my daily log on the left here. It is my diary. It has all of my stats for, for the days. I usually name it like one word or one phrase. And today is, I don't even know because I don't even know what's happening today and it's raining today. So I have the emoji set to rain. I have the date. I have the weather, events, mood, condition, and these are all select fields, except for this one. This one's just a text field because for the actual events, I will put it on my calendar. And I have text fields for the meals and I have an AI summary for my day. And I have four hidden ones, which is a period tracker. This is the skincare tracking that I will talk about later. And I have it filtered to show only today's entry so it's less intrusive and I have a skincare shelf right here that shows all of the skincare that I used so I have my morning afternoon and night but we'll talk about that later and underneath that we have this toggle that is at two so I have five databases that I could add a page to just with a click of a button so for example let's add a work task here start rough cut cut and let's put a keyboard and the plant date is today the content is my notion workflow and the status is not started yet when i go back out you will see that on my work list i can see rough cut and a planned date and this works for all the other buttons here and if you decided to replicate this database for yourself you can also set buttons up like this and the reason why i have it on the left side of the page is because on mobile the stuff on the left side actually shows up first if you have multiple columns so i can just go to my home page and access this really easily and this can act as my inbox so i don't have to scroll to the respective databases and that is really convenient and in the same vein we have our time tracker this was made after notion calendar came out because i thought it made sense to track my stuff in notion because you have way more formulas you have roll-ups and you have relations that makes analytics way easier and it's also where most of my tasks live so it makes more sense to link them all together in the past i used to use an app called a tracker to track my daily tasks or routine or even assignment the time that i spend on assignments or illustrations and that will automatically sync to my google calendar but the downside to that is you can't really link them back to my notion database where i put my tasks but now that we have this it's way easier when i click on the walk button it will create a page called walk it will set the start time to now which is when i click the button and set the event to walk and start the tracking status as tracking there can only be one timer running at the time and the reason why is because i have this end timer button where it will end any page that has the status as running. So when I click it, it will automatically stop the timer. So this is where I track my most mundane stuff that happens day to day. And for my tasks, I actually have another separate tracking system. This tracker is also linked to my media database where I track books, manga, movies, or other things that I consume. So as you can see, TV and read. And let's go into this time log so yesterday i had two sessions of manga i actually read a manga for like five hours yesterday because it was it was a really gloomy day so i just did nothing so as you can see here we have the start time and we have the end time and we have media relation this is the webtoon that i was reading let's go into that and here you can see i have a relation to the time tracker which is this one and those two sessions and i also have a formula that calculates how many sessions there are which is a roll-up 
and I also have another roll up that calculates how much time I've actually spent. So this makes more sense than having a straight up start date and end date in the media page itself because a lot of times when you consume media like books or TV shows, it works in sessions, not just a wide time range. So it makes more sense to track in sessions. So that's why I decided to set up this way. But for tasks, I have it set up differently. So let's go into that as well. So for task lists, as you can see here, I have my work, personal and school tasks. Let's go into my personal tasks first because the setup is pretty simple simple for my tasks properties i basically have a start time end time status timeline and minutes spent so how i track my time on each task is i have this automations set up to have automations i think you have to have a pro subscription but if you're a student you can just use your student email to sign up for the pro it's free so for my automations when i set the pages status to in progress it will set the start time to that that moment and when I set it to complete it will send the end time to that moment and then I also have these formulas to calculate to show me the start time and end time and to calculate the minutes I've spent on this specific task this formula for the timeline can actually translate into a calendar or timeline view so you can apply that to notion calendar so whenever I track something it will show up on the notion calendar so yesterday 8 p.m i did this make language learning page from 8 p.m to 9 p.m so let's see how that looks on here as you can see the start time 8 p.m and time 9 p.m and then it automatically calculates the timeline to show on here so that's how it shows on the timeline and the minutes spent is 60 minutes so it also shows as a circle so that's one hour so that is how it looks for my work tasks, it looks a little bit different because we have huger projects that requires multiple steps of tasks. So for example, for this video, I'm filming my video. So this is in progress and the start time has already been locked because it's set to in progress. But when I finish it, so let's say I finished filming right now, it will show the end time. It will calculate the amount of time that I've spent and it is linked to my content calendar, which is my notion workflow. Let's go into that. It links to all of this, all of these tasks that was made here. And with this, I also have a roll up of how many minutes I've spent on this specific task. So that's how I link multiple tasks to one project. And that basically also works the same for my school tasks because for my assignments, I also have multiple steps of tasks I have to do. That is all linked together and I will see the sum of the amount of time I spent on each project really easily. So let's go into my media tracker. I've showed you already before, but there is something else that I wanted to show you. I also have a little automation set up to set up the wide range of date of start to finish. So for example, if I'm reading Big Swiss, let's start it. The start date will be set to January 21st. And if I end it right now, the end date will also be set to today. So we have a time frame. And the reason why I have both of these, I track the wide time frame and also the different sessions is because I want to know like how much I procrastinated reading this book. If I used half a year to finish that book, but I actually only spent two sessions. That makes a difference, right? On, on analyzing how much time I spent on this piece of content. So yeah, I have these two ways of tracking how much time I spent on a single piece of media. And now let's talk about my second brain, which I named my knowledge hub. So first of all, I have this little database which collects different topics. Topics are nouns or really short terms, easily definable terms that I want to explore on. And these are pages on their own. And the reason why I have them as pages is because if they're pages, I can link to my secondary notes and I can link to my media, which as you can see here, for example, the little woman, we have topics, misogyny and history. Isn't that interesting? So that's why I don't have it just as a select field in my actual notes. And underneath that, I have my actual second brain here. Let's view it in my gallery view. I have this um, rating 
I start them by the rating because I want to see the most interesting stuff first. I have it in card view and side note, I didn't actually know that you can view the entire property. So you can just choose warp in view to show the entire field. I, I swear this wasn't there when I started using Notion. So I was really frustrated because I wanted to see the whole field. But now you can't. But now you can. Let's go into a note to dig deeper. So for example, I have a note for the WUG test. I rated it four star. It is already completed, so it is uh, nothing is to be added to it. And it is a definition. is related to linguistics and child development. Let's add a baby here. Okay. And we have an AI summary. So here is the definition for this, the note. And I can also add my own thoughts after it. And the AI field will summarize everything that is on this page. I wouldn't say that Notion AI is really um, reliable or it works perfectly, but for summaries, it works pretty well. But personally, I'm just wishing that they could let us like connect our own chat GPT API to it so we can use our own chosen model instead of the 3.0 that is default for Notion. I also have source where I might put the URL or the username of where I found this piece of information and before is where I put why I wanted to explore this topic in the first place or my thoughts before I started exploring. And last edit at a time is basically just for me to sort stuff. Next, the next interesting thing that is in my database is my dog's tracker page. These are my two dogs. We have Faggy and Bean. These are their databases. This is their age. This is the day that they were home and this is the day since we got them. And they have their own separate databases. We track all of their activities and we press the button to track their pee and poop. But Honestly, today, I, I think I'm going to revamp this because I didn't revamp it yesterday. Today, I'm going to. So, don't look at that. And we also have our chores tracker, which we use to track our chores. But it's also pretty much the same. You click a button, you track it, and it will show up on Notion Calendar. It's really straightforward. So, now let's get into my favorite breaking page of all time, which is my skincare log because i found out you can actually show your file your image file property on your gallery view like this so it looks like a little freaking shelf that looks so cute and this is what sparked this entire idea so first of all i have a database for all of my skincare products these are the skincare products that i have that i bothered to input in here so for example this um rare earth deep pore cleansing mask it is a mask. These are all the types. We have the brand that links to the brand page. We have the key ingredients. And here is where it gets kind of crazy. These ingredients are in their own database. So let's go into glycerin, glycerin, glycerin. It has all these effects. Two effects. Smoothness and elas elasticity and enhanced absorption. Kaolin. Remove dirt and oil. Bentonite remove dirt and oil and I have this roll up that shows the unique values of the effects in the ingredients so here I can see the entire summary of what these three ingredient does whenever I want to look at what a single skincare product does I can simply look at this so look at this Everclear duo plus look at how much it does because all of these ingredients have all of these effects so just look at every single one and whenever I have like a specific particular problem that I want to solve with my skin I can just look at this and say oh I kind of need brightening so I can just look at this and oh I can choose this and this is how I have my skincare log set up and whenever I want to log my skincare I can just go into my daily page and say add and blah 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 and add it all here and that is how I have everything set up and obviously this is not the most simplest minimalist setup of notion of all time because I do love tracking every single thing in my life and particularly with notion calendar it makes it really really easy to block off things in your calendar and have a visualization of how everything worked together in the past if you wanted to do that you would probably have to build like 1000 relation properties and link everything together which was kind of 
stupid and really really counterintuitive but now you can just view everything at once you can even block off that specific portion of time on your calendar so everything everyone else will know you're busy and notion calendar is not perfect i have a lot of um thoughts i mainly want to be able to access some at least some of my properties to view on the notion calendar without needing to go into the notion app itself because um I just want to know like what for example what assignment is this task related to i just thought it would be more intuitive to be able to see that in the calendar itself but i'm still really excited for the possibilities this calendar brings and i recently started this time tracking thing which is really exciting as well yeah you might have noticed that i don't like adding a lot of pictures and widgets on my notion and that's because i don't want the for the load time to be long and i want it to be accessible on mobile as well because if you put pictures when you scroll on mobile it will take longer to scroll to the section that you want to go to so i don't have a lot of those pictures but for sure if i put out a template in the future you can obviously do whatever you want but um yeah, if you want a template, leave a comment in the comments below and when I publish it, I will reply to your comment and notify you. But um, after this tour, maybe you can also make your own template just according to how I have it set up and adjust it to your own routine and you don't have to purchase it from me. But maybe if you appreciated my video and if you got something from this video, you can go to my Ko-fi or Patreon to support my work so i can make more videos like this and explore more on notion because i honestly really really love exploring productivity tools and optimizing how i can make everything more intuitive and better so yeah thank you so much for watching this video i'm really excited for more features on notion calendar and my dog was snoring really loudly next to me this whole time so i hope Y'all didn't hear that because that would be really annoying to edit it out. Yeah, thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you next time. And if you like this video, please subscribe, like, and comment. And support me if you can and if you liked my work. Yeah, goodbye. <laughs>